Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006 for the hydrosphere. I want to talk a little bit about the processes that occur in natural waters. There's a lot of chemistry going on. Um, we've seen in the previous mini lecture the different types of ions that are present in the water, albeit at low concentrations, and they all can undergo reactions simultaneously. So the natural environment, the water system, uh, groundwater, lakes, you know, soil solutions, uh, rain, they're all quite complex systems. Uh, and you can see from this picture here that the system is very heterogeneous. Uh, not only that, uh, but the systems are coupled with living systems, which themselves are extremely complex. Um, they often don't behave uh, in, a, in a normal sort of chemical reaction. Uh, way they behave in some ways like machines. So that's one thing that makes the these systems very complex. Uh, living organisms are generally in a non-equilibrium state. Um, it's well, it's we, maybe perhaps non-equilibrium is not the correct word. It's in a dynamic equilibrium. It's non-equilibrium in the sense of non-thermodynamic equilibrium. But the system is in an equilibrium in the sense that the system is stable uh, to a certain extent. But it's not a thermodynamic uh, equilibrium. How do we know that? Because there's a lot of oxygen in the air. A lot of oxygen uh, in the air, and for that matter nitrogen, these are quite energetic molecules. Oxygen has a double bond ready to combine with other quantities, and nitrogen is a bit less reactive but has a triple bond that can react to form uh, other quantities releasing a lot of energy. So you know, these are non-energetically unfavorable situations, energetically and thermodynamically unfavorable. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the atmosphere persists. So this is a dynamic non-equilibrium system. We don't often deal with that in chemistry. So far you've only learned about K constants. How do, you, how do we cope with dynamic equilibrium? There are complex equilibria. Um, not only are there just one or two equilibria, but many kinds of equilibria are taking place. And we can see that because there's a lot of ions in the water. And to finally complicate matters, there's a widely different range of reaction rates that are taking place. Some processes are really, really slow, taking millions of years. And some processes, like photochemical reactions, take place in a femtosecond. So let's have a quick look at some of the reaction rates. Uh, which is one way to try and understand the environment. Obviously, because it's so complicated, there's two things we can do. We can throw up our hands and say we give up, or we can try and make headway by categorizing things into different, in different ways. And one way to categorize complexity is via reaction rates of the chemical processes that are taking place from fast to slow. So here's a, here's a little table um, that characterizes the different reaction rates and we have for example an acid base reaction proton transfer or electron transfer these are essentially chemical reactions uh, these are very fast processes uh, generally uh, less than a second uh, metal complexation reactions uh, with dative bonds uh, th they are also uh, relatively fast they vary again uh, they're both chemical reactions so they're around about one second Gas solubility, these, uh, for example, carbon dioxide or CO2, uh, oxygen dissolving into water, these kinds of processes, they're moderately slow, about one hour or something like that, uh, because they're interfacial processes. The, the gas can only dissolve at the interface between the, the liquid and, and the solid, whereas acid, acid base and metal complexation are homogeneous reactions that can take place wherever in the whole solution complex. So this is relatively slow. Adsorption and desorption processes. That occurs only at an interface, a gas onto a solid, or um, a chemical species onto a solid. These are really important processes and they're chemical reactions. They occur very, very fast or very, very slowly. So when it's a chemical uh, type reaction where there's a bonding involving one surface site, it can be like an acid-base reaction. Uh, but it can become progressively slower when there are more than one site 
being used to bond. So if you have a bidentate ligand absorbing onto uh, an aluminosilicate, which is you can think of it as a kind of complicated uh, metal silicate aggregate, sort of like a metal complex, but flat because adsorption occurs on a surface, those processes can be slow because the first uh, ligand has to join on and then the second one has to join on and then perhaps even the third. Precipitation and dissolution. These things can these processes can be very slow, up to a year, one day to a year. The types of things that we're talking about here are precipitation of stalactites and stalagmites, for example, calcium carbonate. And then redox reactions. Uh, they are generally very slow because redox reactions involve large energy changes. And whenever there are large energy changes involved, um, those processes have generally taken place already. They've taken place already to attain the most stable state. So often they're kinetically stable, meaning to say they've reached the most stable uh, state, or they're, if they haven't, there's a large barrier. There's a large barrier involved to them changing anymore, these electron transfer processes. So that's why we say the processes are often kinetically stable. That means that there's a large barrier because of the large energies involved for these redox processes. There is a case where redox reactions become much quicker, and that's when life is involved. When life is involved, uh, chemical reactions take place, and these chemical reactions involve transfer of electrons, formation of chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are pairs of electrons. So life involves electricity. Life involves reduction and oxidation. And in certain cases, microbes uh, can catalyze redox reactions. Uh, and in that case, the redox reactions can happen much faster. Okay.